Hello, my name is Manu Ahmed and I'm a consultant oncoplastic breast surgeon and associate professor of surgery. And today I'm going to talk about my international collaborative research program of localization guided breast surgery. This was previously supported by a one year research fellowship from the Royal College of Surgeons when I was a PhD student. So non-palpable breast cancer presents a significant burden of disease with one third of all breast cancers diagnosed annually being termed as clinically occult or non-palpable. The standard management of these lesions is surgical excision using wire guided localization followed by adjuvant therapies. Despite being the gold standard, wire guided localization is associated with a large number of limitations, namely technically, logistically and outcome relatedly. And as a result of this, one fifth of all women conservatively will receive a second operation for incompletely excised cancer as a result of this procedure. As a result of this, during my research thesis, I explored alternatives to wire guided localization. One of the techniques which was available was radio guided surgery. This could comprise of injection with a nuclear isotope, either technetium labeled colloid or iodine labeled seeds. And this could be targeted for surgical excision. Results from randomized controlled trials had provided supporting evidence for good efficacy, lesion localization and excision. And this was supported by meta-analyses, which I conducted demonstrating reduction in operative time, but also possibly a slight increase in terms of volume excision. However, despite these promising factors, the uptake of radioguided surgery had been extremely limited. And this was namely because of the limitations in handling, disposal, and also accessibility of nuclear isotopes. As a result of this, we developed a technique which was based on the principles of radioguided surgery, but omitted the need for radioisotopes with their inherent limitations. This involved the development of a new magnetic technique using a handheld magnetometer demonstrated above together with a magnetic tracer of iron oxide. We use this in a multinational collaborative of units within the UK and the Netherlands in order to assess the first in-woman feasibility study of using a magnetic tracer for lesion localization and subsequent excision. This was a demonstration of the trial schema, which is extremely straightforward in terms of introduction of the magnetic tracer and subsequent excision of a lesion. Here is demonstrated the magnetic tracer in the syringe associated needle and aseptic technique provided. This was injected under percutaneous visualization using ultrasound guidance intratumorally. Once injected, the next stage was the surgical excision of the area. This involved using the handheld magnetometer to identify the magnetic hotspot and allow the surgeon to direct their surgery with appropriate excision. As we can see from the ex vivo specimens, marker clip is in situ in the center representing the lesion. We can see a circumferential, even bullseye excision without excessive tissue. This study led on to a demonstration of the feasibility of the process with 100% localization and led on to further work in order to provide extended cohort evaluation. During our evaluation, we identified that there were limitations in terms of the size of the magnetic probe and its portability. And as a result of this, we looked to a research collaborative approach with the University of Tokyo Magnetic Nanotechnology Program, which had been looking at the development of a more po um, mobile, portable and user-friendly handheld magnetometer. And as a result of this, we set up our collaborative research. 
This involves the localization of lesions again under ultrasound guidance using a solid marker clip introduced and subsequently identified with a handheld magnetometer. This then underwent surgical excision after intraoperative localization. Once the specimen was excised, adequate localization was confirmed with the peak hotspot, the handheld magnetometer, and then intraoperative faxotron assessment of the specimen, which here demonstrates the marker clip being present in situ within the excised specimen. This multinational collaborative approach to an extremely common and high burden of disease such as non-palpable breast cancer has allowed the extension of minimally invasive breast surgery to develop and move forward for the outcomes in women to improve going forward. I would like to acknowledge all the multinational collaboration which has been involved with this project and also the Royal College of Surgeons for the opportunity to speak today and also to, for its provision of funding which formed the basis of a large proportion of this work through its one-year fellowship.